Hello everyone, I am Manali Reshamwala, Assistant Professor from LG Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to talk about ICU Patient Monitoring. It is a part of syllabus for final year physiotherapy students of Gujarat University and the subject is Physiotherapy in Cardiopulmonary Conditions. Let's see the patient monitoring. The requirement of ICU is to assess the status of patient quickly and accurately and to follow their progress for better or worse. This is accomplished as follow by the help of continuous monitoring of ECG, pressure, temperature, EEG and other investigations like respiration, fluid balance, weight, laboratory investigations and radiology. Let's see each of them in detail. First is ECG. Electronic monitoring helps the nurse to observe ECG along with heart rate. It is done usually by a digital rate meter incorporated into the machine. It is done easily and quickly with the help of electronic monitoring. It helps to find out the general rate and rhythm disturbances. For confirmed diagnosis, cardiological investigations are required such as echocardiography and or further. For ECG electrodes, these electrodes are commonly placed on the chest and are very subject to the interference. So a physiotherapist, we need to get understand that any changes or disturbances on the chest directly can lead to change in the rhythm of ECG monitoring which is being shown to the medical officer at the desk. So we need to make sure whenever we are giving chest physiotherapy, we have to uh, inform them and we have to start giving chest physiotherapy because during chest physiotherapy there may happen that because of peculiar uh, trace and the ECG the alarm may buzz but we need to take a close monitoring on patient's clinical condition also before avoiding any kind of alarm. Next is pressure. This can be either arterial pressure, central venous pressure, pulmonary artery pressure and pulmonary wedge pressure and intracranial pressure. Let's see each one in detail. One is arterial pressure. We need to measure systolic as well as diastolic blood pressure. Either we can measure it by stethoscope or automatically it is done by machine or directly measured through a cannula placed in an artery which is known as a transducer. Commonly a wrist uh, that is a radial artery at the wrist joint is being measured with the help of transducer. Next is central venous pressure CVP measured through transducer or simply by photomanometer. CVP allows feeling or driving pressure to the heart to be assessed. So by the help of CVP, we can get to know how much amount of blood is getting into the right side of the heart so that that much amount of the heart is, go uh, heart is going to pump forward as a cardiac output to the lungs. So if the CVP is low, we can get to know the uh, preload of the heart is low. Here is the anatomy described where this is the superior vena cava from both the sides of the vein is getting and then it is uh, draining blood into the right atrium and then into right ventricle from where the blood will be going through pulmonary trunk which is shown here in a green color uh, to the right and left lungs and from there the oxygenated blood will be coming back to the uh, left atrium from where the blood is going to left ventricle and into the systemic circulation through aorta. So here uh, we need to remember these two veins. Uh, so just a quick anatomy we can remind us internal jugular vein which is coming from the neck and subclavian vein which is drawing the blood from the whole upper limb. So we need to remember this place which is going to be seen in the next slide. So the place we have seen is the place where we are going to insert a catheter to measure central venous pressure. Yes, a catheter is usually placed in or close to the right atrium so that we can get to know the perfect preload of the heart. With the use of a percutaneous puncture of medial basal ve basilic vein which is of the, in the arm or with the great uh, veins at the neck like, like either internal jugular vein or subclavian vein which, is, which we have already seen. We have to insert a catheter over here from where it is measuring uh, going up to the right atrium and measuring the pressure around here. However, CVP line allows the administration of potent drugs and hypertonic solutions relatively safely. 
so we need to use a multi lumen cvp lines which may not uh, you know combined all those uh, drugs and whatever the solutions we are giving so there should not be any change in the dose if we are applying so multi lumen cvp is usually used as uh, a commonly used nowadays but we need to make sure if the it is cvp line is given over here at the neck and the jugular vein we make sure that we not move the neck judiciously of the uh, patient or we know just don't need to remove the pillar directly below the neck it may uh, hurt the patient next is pulmonary artery pressure and pulmonary wedge pressure this is very important to measure the load of the blood getting into the left side of the heart so so that we can get to know the whether the left side of the heart is getting proper blood or not and if it is getting proper then there should be a proper cardiac output to the vital organs such as brain and kidney the pressure in the pulmonary artery and in particular the wedge pressure which can be measured with the help of balloon catheter and the balloon of the wedge can be released or inflated it with will so as not to occlude the vessel permanently the wedge pressure reflects the function of the left side of the heart hence the output of the blood to vital organs such as brain and the kidney as we discussed so here in a figure we can see that a balloon catheter is inserted via vein either a subclavian or internal jugular vein and from the uh, superior vena cava from right atrium to right ventricle and into the left into the pulmonary trunk we are inserting this catheter balloon catheter which is going to measure a pulmonary artery wedge pressure so that we can get to know that whatever the amount of blood is going back into the left side of the heart next type and last type of the pressure we measure is intracranial pressure raise in intracranial pressure usually found in patient after head injury or due to cerebral trauma tumor or hypoxic brain damage or sometimes even after the surgery so as icp raises the systemic blood pressure inside the brain also increases and as we know that skull of the bone cannot expand so whatever the amount of pressure whatever the amount of fluid it is there it is going to create a more pressure which is known as cerebral edema because of cerebral edema there is a sharp rise in intracranial pressure and which may further uh, reduce blood to the uh, surrounding area of the brain which may lead to further damage to the brain to avoid that we need to continuously measure the intracranial pressure and we need to uh, ma do measures which control it continuously so this intracranial pressure can be measured by means of transducer connected to either the extradural space or to the ventricles and can be provided early warnings of impending disaster or testifying to adequacy of the treatment next is the temperature yes a body temperature of the patient should be measured and icu is very important as a part of general assessment for instance patient is having fever fever is found in case of sepsis and subnormally temperature may be a sign of brain damage so this way we get to know the condition of patient skin temperature as well as central or core temperature should be measured because in many a times it happens that in icu because of air conditioning the skin of the patient is felt cold but when we measure a core temperature or central temperature there can be rise in it we need to control this temperature either with the help of medicine or other means so that we can reduce some of the difficulties of the patient because high temperature are associated with high oxygen consumption and make it more important for the lungs to be working well because in most of the patient who require uh, monitoring or who are admitted in icu must be having problem with lungs and if we are if the patient is having fever it increases the work of lungs which may pre create more difficulty to patient it may even lead a patient to go on to ventilator so such patients are treated with uh, paracetamol and other kind of drugs we can also other means we can use which are deliberate cooling by fanning or by placement of blanket which circulate cold water accomplishing cooling in control as a manner next is electroencephalogram that is eeg just like ecg monitoring it uh, gives idea about the brain 
A simple single channel device is frequently used during open heart bypass and on ICUs because it is reasonably cheap, can provide useful information as to gross cerebral function and can demonstrate trends in conscious level. Yes, it is used usually in a patient with ICU who have post traumatic epilepsy or who have undergone surgery of brain or patient who have uh, already in coma we to assist them we can use uh, EEG as a diagnostic tool also other measures will include fluid balance a patient in ICU required to be checked about input and output of the fluid which will give various idea about patients uh, renal function and all we need to measure the weight weight also gives a guide to nutritional status and water balance especially in a renal cases where uh, high uh, more of the weight may suggest water retention and we need to give or we need to set certain dose of the uh, drug according to it so we need to measure the weight then respiration monitoring of the volume and frequency using a respirometer is very important in any case of requirement of uh, just physiotherapy should also be noted gas analyzers like spo2 pao2 pa co2 everything should be measured so that we can get the idea of amount of oxygen in blood of the patient then patient's metabolic rate analysis if there is a fever there will be high metabolic rate and according to it we need to when balance the diet of the patient then laboratory investigations such as hematological chemical and bacteriological according to the infection of the patient should be checked and last is the radiology where which includes chest radiograph ct scan especially in head injuries x-rays of the joint and spine of the injury and pathology is suspected so here is the reference thank you